All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Steve Jewett. I'm a county court judge in the Ninth Judicial Circuit of Florida, which is Orlando, Orange County. Good afternoon. My name is Doreen Hartwell, and I'm an attorney in Las Vegas, Nevada. And good afternoon from Oregon. I'm Erin Logason, and I am the presiding judge of Department 3 of the Oregon Court of Appeals. Looking forward to hearing you this afternoon. And we are here for Unit 5. Uh, today's question is question 1. It reads as follows. Hold on, Steve, let's let the students introduce themselves first. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Just... Ready to go. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Hi, my name is Ava McDermott. My favorite court case is Marbury v. Madison. Well, I'm Dominic. My favorite court case is Tarkasa v. Watkins. Hello, my name is Evelyn Hostetler, and my favorite court case is Griswold v. Connecticut. My name is Lucas Marshall. My favorite court case is Riley v. California. Okay. And I'm Zaria Peralta from, yeah, we're all from Conway Classical. We're all sophomores. Teacher is Mr. Torres. He's in the room. My favorite court case is Miranda v. Arizona, and we're all from New Mexico. All righty. Great. Okay. Now I get to read the question. So we're here for, it's question one. Okay. It reads as follows. A result of the decision in Wisconsin versus Yoder, is that quote, any parent or guardian can refuse to let their child go to school beyond the eighth grade to, or learn about a subject by saying it's against their religious uh, beliefs, end quote. Do you agree or disagree with this result uh, of the, or the decision and why or why not? In addition, uh, what words, if any, are found in the US constitution or in a state constitution that protects the rights to an education and finally, how have courts balanced religious beliefs with other rights? Uh, and you may proceed. Mandela said, for to be free is not merely cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. This quote exemplifies why we agree with the decision presented in Wisconsin v. Yoder, because we believe that other litigation has confirmed that education and religion should be able to exist without the interference of each other unless there is a compelling state interest like in Santa Fe Independent School District v. Doe. An example of the courts deciding that there cannot be an interference of religion in public education comes from Epperson v. Arkansas, which decided that a statute prohibiting the teaching of evolution in public schools was unconstitutional. This effectively states that religion cannot get in the way of public education, so it would only be right to allow it the other way around. An instance that supports the ideology that government cannot and should not get in the way of religion is Church of Lukumi I v. City of Hialeah. The court body being asked the imperial church praying that government should not put an undue burden on religious practices. This decision displays that the government should not get in the way of religious activities, and due to the fact that most education is public, it should not be in the way of schools. Forcing students to learn about subjects that may violate their sacred beliefs and vice versa it is wrong. It goes against what we stand for, not just as a country, but as a society. America is a country that was founded on the concept of freedom, and it would be hypocritical to force Americans to give up their sacred beliefs and ways of life just for government interests. And that's why we agree with the decision. To quote Mandela again, quote, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Is it a right in the eyes of the American Constitution? While many believe that it should be, it is not under federal jurisdiction. In San Antonio Independent School District v. Rodriguez, the Supreme Court ruled that the Constitution does not establish a fundamental right to education. Because of this ruling, the Ninth Amendment cannot be used to consider education as a right that is not enumerated in the Bill of Rights. Due to this, it is the state's responsibility to provide public education. Each one of the 50 states have language in their constitutions that mandate a public education system. For instance, in New Mexico state constitution, it states that a uniform system of free public schools sufficient for the education of and open to all the children of school age in the state shall be established and maintained. Since there are not many federal guidelines, the protections in each state vary. For instance, Colorado's constitution defines a school year as being at least three months, while North Carolina's defines it as at least nine months. Although the Supreme Court ruled there is not a fundamental right to education, it has ruled in favor of equal protection for various groups of minority. Allowing me, Nichols, the court established that failure to provide English language instruction to those students who spoke no English was a violation of the Civil Rights Act. In Plyler v. Doe, the court ruled that children of undocumented immigrants would not be denied an education. 
Rulings in numerous other cases, such as Brown v. Board and Park v. Pennsylvania, also protect education for minorities. Politician, politician Robert Irwin said, when, Sam, when religion controls government, political liberty dies, and when government controls religion, religious liberty perishes. As is commonly stated from the Je Jeff Jefferson letter to Danbury Baptist, there is a separation of church and state, thus meaning government cannot issue an official religion for either the country or state. Uh, but however, government and religion have also intertwined and come into question. In the court case Lemon v. Kurtzman, it introduced the Lemon Test. The free question inquiry deals with religion, education, and government funding, and addresses whether or not a law or government action will interfere with the First Amendment. Following this result, other cases have built upon and used the Lemon Test as a guideline. In Everson v. Board of Education, it was determined that religious schools can indeed gain funding from the government as long as all religious schools receive the same funding. Um, in summation, we agree with the Wisconsin v. Yoder decision because of the statutes in the Constitution and courts for the freedom of religion, and we verify that while the national Constitution does not directly prohibit, ah, protect an idea. Okay. So. <clears throat> You uh, did sort of touch on this, but um, if you guys could sort of expand on um, what exactly is the separation of church and state? What is that? What does that? I mean, we've heard we hear that thrown around a lot. What exactly does it mean? Uh, in my yes. opinion, it, oh, uh, in my opinion, and I think in our group's opinion, we think it means that they exist. Uh, at least here in the United States, as autonomous uh, entities, essentially. They don't uh, get in the way of each other. There shouldn't be uh, laws uh, in the government that are religiously charged or religiously influenced, and the government should not be in the way of religious practices and societies. Doreen, you're muted. Oh, sorry about that. So to the extent that, and this is kind of a follow-up on, on the question um, that was just asked, um, to the extent that um, you, you state that government, the relationship between the church and the state is that each is autonomous and one does not, um, should not get in the way of the other do you think that there would be an advantage um, or disadvantage in having an established religion? There would be a definite disadvantage as our country is funded on the principle of religious freedom. So having an established religion, of course, would force many to give up their religious practices and beliefs and put them at a complete disadvantage in our country. Furthermore, the United States is made up of tons of different groups of people who ha all have different cultures and religions, which makes it more of a salad kind of country, in which case having an established religion doesn't really work for a very uh, a population like ours. I agree. Having an established religion would be a source of even more polarization that we don't need. And we have to remember that most of the people that first came to the United States in the first place were seeking religious freedom because they're already persecuted. So if we were to establish um, a religion, a national religion, then it would take away part of what makes America so great. Well, I think you also have to look into the historical context of why founders chose not to establish a new religion. And that's probably because the, it was the 1700s, the Enlightenment era, where a lot of these enlightened rulers weren't really imposing one official religion anymore. And a lot of the philosophers of the time All right. Can you evaluate the pros and cons of adding a right to education to our national constitution? 
Well, I think one pro would that be that um, by having a more educated society, we can make more innovations, which makes the livelihoods of everyone better. But a definite downside would be deciding what do you teach and at what levels. I think a different con as well that goes with this is the US is such a wide expanse of land and culture, thus meaning if you were to teach everyone in the country the same curriculum, it wouldn't cater to depending on where that person lives if it's necessary. Um, did, some, did anyone else have something? Yeah, okay. Um, along that lines though, um, math is not, has nothing to do with the culture of the place you were at and history that shouldn't really have anything to do with the culture. Um, so wouldn't, wouldn't that cut towards having some national um, standards and have, having a right to the education? I would say to an extent, history should be continue to be a state by state basis. Like uh, for example, in New Mexico, and I think in most states we learn New Mexico state history. So it would be weird to learn about the same, like the same state history as, uh, you know, kind of learn about every state's individual history in some manner, like you would kind of have to do if you were to institute a federally uh, established system of history. But uh, I do agree uh, that quite a lot of elements of teaching could be taught to everybody in the country, regardless of geography or culture. Well, I also think that we do have like nationwide testing or like SAT, ACT, or even like the park test or the map test, it's really to measure where our level's at. In fact, I think that's the purpose of map. And if our state's below the federal standards for, because they test for math and English, if we're below that, they probably could step in and change that because of the, I guess, 14th Amendment. But most of the time, they just leave states to decide our national likes to stay broad. In your um, prepared remarks, you noted that um, in San Antonio versus Rodriguez that the Supreme Court held that there was no fundamental right to education and um, stated that therefore the Ninth Amendment cannot be used to um, argue that education is a, a fundamental right. Can you um, expound on that a little bit more? And can you think of an argument to the contrary to that it can be used, the ninth in conjunction with the 10th can be used to argue for education as a right. Also in San Antonio, uh, Independent School District v. Rodriguez, um, the main ruling that they had, as you said, was that the constitution doesn't establish a fundamental right. And so kind of the significance of that ruling is it's not the national government's responsibility to establish education to establish public school systems and so when that's really the true true significance because state constitutions actually recognize education's right it's just not recognized federally so this just means that the state constitutions and the state itself is responsible for protecting public education i'm uh just a tad confused on like a counter argument that you can make to a Supreme Court that has decided that you cannot use a ninth, the ninth to say, oh, that's just an unenumerated right. So I guess prior to it being decided, you could have said that the ninth is just so uh, varied. And um, as one person was saying, it creates like a, sorry. Go ahead, just finish your thought. Uh, it creates like a whole universe of rights, um, which was kind of what the founders intended is that you just can't possibly list out all the rights that human beings have. So before that, you could have just said, well, how do you possibly decide what's in that universe and what's not? But uh, after the Supreme Court decided, there's, it's kind of hard to argue against the Supreme Court. <laughs> Thank you. All righty, great, good job. Although I feel bad for Dominic, I know he had a lot to say, but we, he had a little, uh, little a problem with hearing him um, because of the, the tech, you know, of course it's a, a problem. Um, 
Uh, I like the structure of your opening statement. Uh, I tend to disagree with Yoder. I think that, that, that there's some problems with it. Um, and I think one thing that you, that, that you need to look at in, in Yoder though is it's really very limited. I mean, it's based on the very limited situation in which the, the, the kids there were because the, you know, the dissent and all the different rulings is that this, uh, this, these people, these children, don't need to learn more than than eighth grade because they're just going to be you know plucking turnip turnips out of the ground for the rest of their life, um, which sounds terrible to me. Um, and their right and the ability for them to make more of themselves, they're not going to be lawyers, doctors, or engineers, is being taken away. So I I, I understand what they say um, and they limit it to those factual situations, but I I'm, I think it's problematic. It's always been a problem for me. Um, but you're not the only ones who are okay with it. Um, so, uh, but I think that the, 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 it's not whether you agree or disagree, it's how you make the argument. And I thought you were successful in that. Um, you uh, talking about the lemon test, of course, is very important. Um, and I also like the fact that you brought in some historical uh, knowledge with the, with, and I think Dominic was brought in the, the enlightenment and, and those things, because that, that uh, we haven't heard a lot of that. And that the history, of course, um, is very important uh, when you're going to go back and look at the importance of education. But I think it's a, a, a good job. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I thought you guys did a good job. You in your prepared remarks, you um, definitely addressed the question asked. Um, you, and you found that you um, agreed with Yoder and then you went and explained why you did. Um, you cited to, obviously San Antonio was um, versus Rodriguez was a, a big case for you guys. Um, you referenced the, the Ninth Amendment and you also referenced um, various state constitutions and um, with regards to their um, providing a, a right and access to um, education. Uh, I thought that you all were, um, everyone participated and were responsive to the questions asked. Uh, and I liked uh, your answers, the, the pros and cons uh, to, um, you know, edu a right to education. What would that look like? Um, I thought it was interesting. Um, and everyone obviously has their, um, their viewpoints. And I, I thought that you guys supported your, your position with regards to um, some of the cons enforcing a national education standard, so to speak, with the differences in the different states and the sizes and so forth. You gave concrete examples um, to support your opinions. And so I thought you did a good job with that. And so good job. I don't have much to, I did enjoy hearing about your favorite Supreme Court court cases and wish we had more time to just, just talk to you about that. Um, from your prepared remarks, um, they were responsive to the question and uh, I particularly appreciated your discussion of the state constitutions and the level of detail you, you, you uh, addressed those with. I thought it was fascinating that the, the different constitutions speak to different lengths of, school year. Um, it'd be interesting to think about the origins of those. I'm sure you and you probably already know them. I thought you did, um, as Doreen said, carefully weigh the pros and cons of having a national right ed to education and, and especially did appreciate your discussion of, of the potential cons uh, given local interests in um, ed education. Cause it's a real dicey issue. You want everybody in the country to have equality of opportunity, but but different regions have, have different interests as well. How you sort that out in a country as large as ours is um, a problem I'm glad your generation is here to solve. Um, beyond that, just I think one, 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 one constructive point, you know, at, at the end we got into a, a little bit of discussion about how can you have a counter argument to a Supreme Court case saying that you know, it's not protected by the Ninth Amendment, and I'd encourage you as you go forward to think about how this this question itself gives you an answer to that. I mean, this question has so many cases where the Supreme Court changed its mind about the standards that protect free exercise. You know, we had the Yoder standard, and then we had Employment Department versus Smith, and in recent days, things have kind of gone a different direction, and and. 
I think sort of one way for people in your position institute to deal with that is to acknowledge, like you did, that the Supreme Court has said this, but maybe not all members thought the same way. Or, or um, you know, one thing I'm a huge proponent of coming from the West, not unlike you, the Western states have not had a huge amount of participation on the Supreme Court. So they haven't had the benefit of all the ways that they, you know, people growing up in this part of the country can, can see it. And, and, and so I think you should be, be, you know, again, demonstrate your knowledge of what, what the law is. But if you see things differently and can make a counter argument, uh, that's a very valuable thing thing to do, and and you should feel quite comfortable doing that in the context of this this program. But thank you. That was a really fun presentation to listen to. Thank you very much. Good luck, you guys. <laughs>